Welcome to Ronsi Canard. Uh, did I say that right? It's beautiful. <laughs> Everything you say sounds I know, I should say it in Scottish. I really feel that? I should introduce you in Scottish. Um, and your husband, Rob, own and operate Canard Bagpipes and Reeds since 2001, and also an online retail store. Um, you opened a physical storefront, Clans, Celts and Clover, in 2005, while still operating a family farm by Lake Deef and Baker. Um, they then decided to sell the retail store in 2010. However, the products sold um, now become part of the products offered online uh, with Canard Bagpipes and Reeds. In 2006, you were finalists for the Sabex and Exports. In 2009, you were Abex finalists um, for Business Excellence. Uh, for 2010, Sabex finalists in Customer Service. And, ba bum you became winners um, just last week, uh, as you also um, back were the winner. Back. Yeah, with 2017 and 18, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for New Business Venture with Sandy Shaw Resorts. So, Woo, fantastic. Yeah, congrats. You know, as well, just kind of keep on entering, and eventually, you know, they, they, they will not ignore you. You will. <laughs> um, Sandy Shore Resorts uh, is owned by Lay Flight Properties near Gardner Dam on Lake Diefenbaker. Uh, Ronsi grew up near Lake Diefenbaker, um, where her family still farms, and Lake Life Properties' motto is making memories. So let's make some memories here tonight as we get shaken with Ronsi. Yeah, great. Let's do yes. this. Okay. All right. Well, sorry, I'm going to keep you going here. You've got, you've got, you're the yes, first one up. Yes, I am, I am. I need to. question. Okay, so mentorship has played an important role in your business success. You were mentored through the Raj Manek uh, Mentorship Program and later became a mentor of that yourself. Um, for those that aren't familiar with that program, um, share, us, share with us how that program has impacted you um, personally and professionally. So I love that this question was first because mentorship is such a, um, a key part of what, um, what fueled um, and our accelerated business growth. So when I opened Clans um, on Broadway, the, few, the first few weeks, um, we were um, welcomed to, to the community by bid. Um, there was um, advertising opportunities um, that we had people come into the store with advertising opportunities, not so much with customers. And um, I, I was really worried. It was a September. It was a wee soft September, like a soft rain. And um, I wasn't getting customers in the door. And I knew that I couldn't afford to have three years to get my business growing. And I needed to really hit the ground running. Um, I went to Women Entrepreneurs West now and was connected with the Raj Manik Foundation. My first match um, was a wonderful couple. Um, but they said, you know what, we're really busy with retail in our um, in our in their current retail store and we'll meet with you in the new year and I thought oh my gosh what am I going to do so I sought an, a second match and during that process I purchased um, a storefront uh, a, a fixture from body shop owners and that was Gordon Marine Haddock and uh, I ordered the wrong truck so the, this truck shows up, it's the, not the right tailgate height for the dock, and this guy starts talking. And at what, uh, pretty early on I said, can you just stop for a second so I can get pen and paper and take notes? And so for the whole hour I interviewed him um, and took notes. And then um, when, when my mentorship, just timing wasn't quite right, I went back to him and said, hey, like, what do you think about working with me? And uh, this is a really busy guy with lots of businesses. And, and he said, sure. Um, so I would encourage everybody to, to, um, to join a mentorship program. I feel like it was getting an MBA in my own business. Um, it was the support that I needed um, at a really a time that can be really quite isolating, and um, and it fueled the growth of my businesses. And so I've continued to be part of mentorship programs. I think it's absolutely critical. I'm impressed um, continually by the generosity of Saskatoon's business owners when I have questions, like really like pushy questions, like stuff that you know best friends might not share. Business owners will tell you stuff um, about running their business. So if I ask about like details of their insurance coverage somebody will go dig that up for you like and share their stories so um, you're not alone I, it's wonderful yeah 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 mentorship yeah 
Um, so back to back new venture um, winner. And this is really different than what you had in the in the past in your business, you know, um, encounters. And so, uh, Sandy Shores Resort. And so tell, it's unique, it's different. So tell us a little bit about that journey. What were some of the challenges that you had? Uh, how did you overcome the, come, come those challenges? What did you learn through this whole process? So it's different, um, but what's the same is the love of learning. Um, always, um, I, I love um, taking on a new project, a new challenge. And um, there's wonderful support here. So, um, outside of mentorship, surrounding yourself with really experienced contractors, that kind of thing. And it has been a wonderful kind of um, time to be to receive the award, but the challenges weren't small in getting there. And so I think we live in a time of um, Instagram and it's easy to um, kind of see that it might be easy and the challenges were pretty significant for me so I had a, a partnership termination so that was probably my biggest challenge and it was emotionally so it was, it was yes. pretty hard yeah, being there. yeah so I think maybe I'm not um, you know partnerships statistically are, are challenging um, but I would also say those challenges brought the best opportunity. So because it's being recorded, I'm going to say manure makes great fertilizer. Like that's good fertilizer, <laughs> right? Like it really I was, love that. like things grew from there. So um, it, it worked out to be a, a wonderful that. opportunity, but it came from a dark place. Um, and I think when we're in those dark places, all of those supports that you generate along the way um, really come to, to be really important and you see who's kind of there to support you during those challenging times. So um, yeah, all of our businesses have had lots of challenges. There's not, uh, um, when, I, when I left the store, um, it was like leaving a child. I loved that business. <laughs> I love Scottish, Scottish Celtic product. And it was really hard for me to leave that behind. But I had three young kids and three businesses, and I was finding my balance was way off. What balance? Yeah. What balance? <laughs> what we'll get to balance? that. Yeah. And so I, the balance was pretty elusive and off for me. So the, um, the challenge at that time with the storefront for me was human resources. And um, we had terrific staff. I'm not saying we didn't have wonderful people, um, but the retail hours are really challenging for those that are in retail like we um if if our employees are sick um we have to be there and so you miss hockey games and yeah. um and my daughter was in hospital and i wasn't able to be with, there with her so um i made some changes at that time yeah so and was certainly a couple it of sounds the big to ones. me like um already that you'd be a great mentor to have because mm. you've gone through all yeah. of this manure <laughs> as you say. Um, so not only a female entrepreneur, but alongside with your husband, um, what do you think is the secret to your success when, first of all, a lot of entrepreneurs struggle in those first five years of startup and also struggle being um, with partners, with their partner? Absolutely. So I'd say the success for us has been um, we're so entwined that we really don't know how to like be apart anymore. Like it's been a long time, but um, the our roles are very very different. So Rob's a mechanical engineer. Um, he he does our design manufacturing and although we work together and, and we both work from home we will go a whole day and not see each other um, at, at all and so we have a workshop attached to our home and so we have very defined roles and um, that's important yeah yeah and that really has been the key with that with that business and I would say I felt a lot of pressure initially to do it all and to have balance and achieve balance. I And I'm not good at it. I'm really poor at it. I read an article a few months ago that talks about there's five things. There's work, um, there's a uh, spouse, your sleep, exercise, and I do, and you should be able to do three of them. I think I do one and a half. And I do the rest of them pretty badly sometimes. So um, I'd say um, he's relatively forgiving. Um, you know, at times you prioritize your children. At time, most of the time work is pretty, a 
pretty good priority. Like, I, I enjoy yeah, that. Pays I, the bills. It and, does. Yeah. So work has been a priority. But um, you, ha I have a spouse that, because we work together, he's forgiving about, most of the time, about our, you know, when that balance is off. And I think all the discussion for me about achieving balance um, led me to really struggle when I think it's... Elusive. I, elusive for many of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially if you're starting a new business. Yeah. yeah, I really like this question because every person we ask something about balance, because yeah. everybody thinks that, they, you know, oh, yeah, I find that balance. And it's like, what is that, right? Yeah. And to every person, it's, it's a different thing. It's very personal what that means to them. So Absolutely, yeah. 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 So right now... Um, we're in these really interesting times, interesting economic times. And, you know, having been in business for a very long time in regards to, you know, online retail in front of people and now a new venture, what is the key to sustainability and success, especially when you're going through sort of a little bit of a economic challenge or hiccup? So I was really scared to launch uh, a resort development a year ago, when um, really, like five years ago, would have been brilliant, right? Um, but it wasn't. It, it was what it was. So um, I think I I ne I haven't planned for that. I think you lay out wonderful plans. You have contingency plans, but ultimately, I have fun at what I do, and I work really hard. And money's the third motivator. Maybe. It's not for me. So for me, I just, I have this vision. I am super committed to it. Um, my accountant has um, maybe <laughs> lost more sleep over the water treatment plant than I have. So I built a water treatment plant in the first year of development. There's no business plan for that. It's, but it's my vision and I'm committed to it. I, I am having fun. I love what I do. And then I just work really hard and I hope that the sustainability and money comes after. Yeah. So I think we should, I think most of us as entrepreneurs, you pick something you're super passionate about. I get to share Lake Diefenbaker with kind of a bigger audience. That's super exciting for me. I think we have this wonderful gem in our backyard that lots of people don't know about. And uh, if it's, yeah, and then I just keep working harder. So awesome. Um, number of businesses under your belt, and uh, again, some of these aren't small, you know, businesses. These are big businesses with a lot that goes into them. Um, what's your next business? Is there a five-year plan? <laughs> if my husband heard that question, he'd be like, so <laughs> he'd be so concerned. But there, so for us. Um, uh, Sandy Shores Resort is just in its second year, so we're super excited to to uh, keep working on that. But there's businesses within that business, so um, I guess the next one for us is uh, we do have a proposal for a marina, and so um, that would be a business in itself within the business. So mm -hmm. um, the resort will have probably around 200 lots, but the the marina would also have about 200 um, if the proposal is accepted. So um, there's a lot of hoops to jump through to, to make that happen. What has the feedback been like from the people that live in and around the area? Have they, did you have any kind of friction or was it all... Not ever. Development is um, is a pretty controversial area and mm -hmm. rural a thing in rural areas, but overall really positive. So what's been exciting for me is to watch people come from Calgary and and come and retire here. Like yeah. the traffic flow I think is reversing and to showcase this really beautiful gem of a place yeah. that's right in our backyard. It's an hour from Saskatoon. And um, the support from the community has been terrific. The RM has been amazing to work with. And then all those local contractors in business, it is quite different than doing business in Saskatoon. So um, there hasn't been a lot of um, development. And I'm not the new kid in the ball. Under, well, in the you block. come from there as well. Yeah, I so do. So that that's must make home. a difference. Yeah. So yeah, when those sure. contractors are yeah. also successful, I'm excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't there like a, I thought I read somewhere, there's a lay Lake Defense bigger tourism association. Uh, yep, so I'm one of the board members oh, okay. on LDT and uh, 
things are, there's for 50 years, Gardner Dam celebrated its 50th anniversary. All the reports talk about this amazing potential. I think we're moving past potential and we're really starting to see things um, happen in the entire region. And it's, it's time for us to, Potential's great, but we need some things happen. Like yeah. we need some things dirt dug, build some cabins. Like it's exciting to watch things um, actually go beyond potential. Be being someone that's that's not from Canada or not from Saskatchewan, I found that I saw things in a completely different way than people that were like, "Oh, it's just that." It's like, no, you don't understand. You've got all of this space and this beauty, and why aren't you doing what you're doing? So it's it's nice to kind of get that this tangible confidence that the people of Saskatchewan are getting as they're realizing that people live here and moving here because it's an awesome place to be. So um, the more kind of positive development like you're doing is is fantastic. So it's great. Yeah. We have three new, three new neighbors that come to mind, but yeah, all some of the several of the new neighbors that um, are from coming from Alberta. Um, I think Saskatchewan's the place to be right now. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. agree. I agree. It's great, and those and that's the message everybody else has to hear when there's a bit of negativity about what's going on. There, it's still we're doing really good here in our yeah. province. And so great that's people. good to hear. And yeah. great Absolutely, people, great places, yeah. spaces. Uh, I always end the question period with my question of who has been a mentor we talk about mentorship mm -hmm. or inspiration and you could have a number of them they could be personal they could be professional that has really made an influence on you and your your life your your career or personal life so because I already talked about my mentor and Gordon Marine um, I'm still maintain um, contact and have lots of support and um, we work through lots of business questions but the other um, mentors for me were my parents and um, I didn't appreciate it at the time for <laughs> sure um, but my, I grew up on a farm on, at, on Lake Diefenbaker and um, they are some really um, caring hard-working um, farmers and um, I think that um, respecting people um, the knowledge, um, the really broad-based knowledge, working hard. Um, so yeah, driving grain truck and working late at night. I, you know, my I went to school, but I bailed most of the in the evenings. Um, I would bail because I was kind of a night owl, and so I ba would bail into the early or hour mornings. And um, did I always appreciate that? If there was party, for sure not. Yeah. <laughs> but it has served me well. Work ethic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can drive a standard, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and uh, there's uh, yeah, I can I can hold my own uh, um, in a so in the male dominated construction kind of industry as I'm managing projects, um, maintain a sense of humor and uh, and I feel like pretty comfortable um, just learning and um, working through all of those situations that come up now. Yeah. So when you, uh, we'll get to the audience. I'm just having another question here. Sorry, I'm allowed to do that. Um, <laughs> yes, you so are. you grew up there. Is this the land that you ha farmed? All? Like, is it part of your land or this is? It wasn't. It so, wasn't, okay. Um, I was looking for an opportunity in the area. So I had, you know, you go to sports and leisure show and I saw these, you know, northern lakes and smaller lakes and I thought, what the heck? Like, why is that? Why are things not happening on Lake Diefenbaker? So I started probably six or eight years ago looking for an opportunity on Lake Diefenbaker. This was a parcel that was tendered out through the Ministry of Environment. It's surrounded by Danielson Provincial Park, and I put together a proposal, and uh, I was successful. So I'm really, really grateful. Um, the I think the the government of Saskatchewan identified three parcels, um, and the again we talk about potential. But this has sat there. They planted these trees. It's a fully mature tree development. There's ash and spruce and poplar, lilac, um, apple trees. They planted those in 1968, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I think they waited for me because I wasn't I wasn't born then. <laughs> <laughs> so the trees grew and. And I, I developed my business expertise, and then um, I was finally ready. And that tender came out, and it was just, it was meant for me. It was perfect timing. I'm passionate about it, um, and it's really taken off. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, where does the name, Sa- sorry, I'm doing it again. Yeah. Where does the name Sandy Shores? <laughs> it was actually on. my other partner that chose the name. Okay. And okay. so what I'm ex- super excited about this year is you can't have a resort called Sandy Shores without having beach. And so the, we sold, I sold 44 lots in the first, or 43 in the first year, 44 now. And um, now this year we get to polish that beautiful gem. And this year we work on trails and beach and parks. Awesome. So that's like when people come to the lake, that's what they're there for is the sandy shores. Lake Stephen Baker has 800 kilometers of shoreline and beautiful beaches. Mm-hmm. So two new ones, hopefully this summer at Sandy Shores and uh, and. I would encourage, whether you come to the development or other areas of the lake, 800 kilometers of beautiful shoreline, um, 26 species of fish, world record trout. Um, it's it's a fanta- mm-hmm. water quality um, that's fantastic. It, you can do any unlimited water sports. So it's really a great place to hang out. It is an hour from Saskatoon. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Okay, I'll let you guys ask some questions <laughs> now. Questions. So yeah, we'll open it up to the audience. Anybody have a question here? A little, uh, all of those things. So I, I feel very lucky and blessed to have been born here. Um, you know, I didn't pick all of those things. I was born to a family that's very supportive um, of what I'm doing. And then um, I've taken those um those wonderful blessings, and I've worked really hard, and I, I've made sacrifices. Um, so I think I think a, a really a combination of both, absolutely, yeah. So in and a lot of resort communities, there's kind of a a lot of them have been grandfathered in, but any new resort community, um, it would be pretty common practice to haul water. So we do have agreements where um, water haulers would come in and there's um, there's Enbridge Line 3 in the area, so there's active water haulers. So everyone could have installed tanks and just had water hauled in. Um, but the in a rural area, when I grew up, um, our barn burnt when I was five years old. I'm pretty scared of fire. Um, so, and I love those trees. When I talk about the mature trees, um, the, that's a, like when we pull, the, when you build and build road, build cabins, you pull some of those out. So I was really concerned about fire protection environmentally, like it really encouraging lot owners to plant trees, landscape their lots. And, uh, and I wanted potable water to be available. I think when I looked at the infrastructure, I knew that I would do one major project kind of as a an investment in the area, but like a gift, like I'm, I don't need to do that, but I'm committed to kind of making sure that it's a very high level of infrastructure. I wanted a, um, that, t- that was my vision. And so it was, um, prob- the business plan certainly would be to, the water treatment plant itself would be more sustained by having um, 40 cabins. We have eight buildings on site in the first first year. So um, I think it's aggressive to pursue the, those pieces of infrastructure early. But potable water, I think, has the best value for our lot owners' investment. It offers potable water. It offers fire protection. And it certainly, um, I'm not metering it. I And I'm encouraging lot owners to plant trees. I, I don't think we're all things to all people. We're not a great fit. I think people locate at a lake if they have family connections, for sure. Um, but if they're looking, and I can get in front of them, um, what what's surprising to me last year was um, I would say like 75% of my tours, almost all of them, um, had made their decision by the time they booked a tour. And so my tours weren't... Um, weren't tours that I was expecting. They, I would tour them and we would sign documents on the spot for major purchases. So the marketing is really key. And so I think having um, a website um, that has really comprehensive content has been really key for us. Um, we do, uh, we have a backend system where we can, you know, Upload. So if we get questions, we immediately try and, and put that content. If one person has asked it, other people um, will, will likely have that question. So we try and make sure our website is, um, is easy to navigate, 
Um, we're always looking for suggestions on what we need to update with it. It has good search engine optimization. We do all our social media in-house. Um, we, I do trade shows. I found the trade shows to be really good. Um, and we do contests and um, the Sabex is pretty terrific. Yeah. There's no better place for me to be than in front of 630 or 645 business owners. Um, so that event is amazing. And so the marketing is primarily in-house and uh, yeah, I think I like that aspect of it. So, um, and our law <coughs> owners referral now. Um, so we do have a realtor that we work with, but most of the sales have probably come either from my work or lot owner referral. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and definitely um, the website like that is good for qualifying and disqualifying. Right. And, you know, then it saves your time when you um, happen to answer the phone and yeah. ask questions, right? It's all done. So and most people are watching Netflix now and researching <laughs> it was time. shocking how many people would come and have a decision already made yeah. before meeting me um and so certainly they've toured on their own but um i think the idea of not of like holding information back off of the website i it really clarified for me that you yeah. just put it all out there because yeah. they're deciding anyways yeah otherwise yeah. they get frustrated that they yeah. can't find what they want so yeah, yeah. good move good move anyone else one more, one more. Nope. Okay, that's all right. Cause I this is my fun. This is my fun round. <laughs> you were did you thought this is kind of interesting? Hey, I, I think it was the part that was the hardest. I know. It is. <laughs> like, what? This is when we get to really find out some good dirt on you. So this is the seven revelations, and this is something for those that are new. I just ask him really off ball questions. So with that being said, what is an item on your bucket list? So for me, I, um, I need some more time off work because I want to go to Belize and take my diving certificate. Oh, yeah. So um, anybody on That's that two, bucket two things on the bucket list. Just travel. Awesome. And, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, you are a collector of? Businesses? With <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bagpipes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> so I have three businesses and three kids. I don't have time to collect very many, but I love coins and rock. So um, my kids on Diefenbaker, they'll, they'll like, there's a kid right now who has the, she's been in the news. I want to meet her so bad. She's my hero. So she has fossils like the coolest fossils, um, like the coolest 10 year old. So my kids <laughs> will bring fossils home and we keep those treasures. Cool. Yeah, they're pretty That's fun. awesome. Um, do you have a hidden talent? Um, so this one I went, I asked a friend, so I had to call a friend. <laughs> my sister said my hidden talent is lifeguarding. My other friend said, listening, I feel like I need more exotic habits. Um, so yeah. it, when I work less, I'm going to work on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, maybe sarcasm. found it. Yeah. Right? Maybe sarcasm Very hidden. is my other language. <laughs> That's my other language. What's the favorite thing for you to do when you're relaxing at Sandy Bay? So I, Sandy Shores, I when I, when I think about the lake, for me, it's the water. And so I love boating and we, ha my parents, this is where, this is where luck comes into play. My parents have a 34 foot houseboat nice. and oh, nice. um, we put oh, like badge. a little, um, we've got a little, those little portable generators so that we can run a blender and, um, oh, okay. yeah. There's margaritas. Yeah. We're talking margaritas. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not talking, making smoothies. We're not calling right? juicy. Yeah. So my husband has like a, the Vitamix, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I bring pineapple, but it goes really beautiful with like a lime daiquiri. Yeah. yeah. Sounds awesome. like a plan right yeah. there. Um, pet peeve. So this, I, I was like, it's hard to answer that because you're going to like see Partners. my scowly face. <laughs> so right now for me, it is um, like people talk so much about issues, but getting people to be involved. So we're all really passionate about issues. We put them out on social media, but um, we have trouble filling our board positions. And yeah. um, I saw there was an, something today on the news about um, Donald Trump sent prayers or whatever and to the school shooting. Yeah. And there was a teenager who came out and said, enough with your prayers. It is time for you to start taking action and protecting us. Yeah. And I thought, like, that's a smart kid. So I like whether it's voting or politics, whatever. Um, I was so impressed with the number of candidates that we had for the SAS party election. Um, you know, we just we have those people 
people stepped up. So whatever party you're engaged with, um, we have had people step up to these positions that are really, um, wow, like it's amazing. We have people stepping up, but I think we need more of that. Yeah, and, it, and you put yourself out there if you do. It's, it's yeah. a big thing, but yeah, we need people with courage for sure. Mm -hmm. um, favorite Celtic tradition? Oh, so I love them all. And so <laughs> like I, this... This is a heather gem. And so this came in yesterday. And so I love heather gems. I'm going to talk about them. Um, so heather is cut from real heather. And all the Celtic jewelry. Hey, what is heather? Sorry. So he a, a plant beautiful in it field. It smells really good. Oh, and yeah. has a beautiful purple, purple. blossom. Mm -hmm. and But it's actually like a stocky bush, like a caragana. Okay. So they cut it down. But that's what regenerates it. So it's like a caragana. It regrows. It's actually good for it to cut it down. And then they color it. And they make gemstones out of it so it's really uniquely Scottish jewelry yeah. um, and for me the tradition is Highland Games so my kids are involved yeah. in pipe band drumming and Highland dance toss um, in the caba toss in the oh, we <laughs> have not done that I um, but how much fun we love to you watch have, all do of you that have trees you're gonna take down with some cabas and there are Highland Games here in Saskatoon there's not in Saskatoon but we have lots of Kayleigh's Robbie Burns and yeah. there's a Highland mm. Games in Regina May long weekend and uh, they're you know for me moving every time yeah shed a tear yeah <laughs> uh, secret indulgence beyond like wine and <laughs> um Probably wine. Wine, more wine. <laughs> wine, wine, more wine. Thank you to the yeah, wine yeah, rest tonight. You. Yeah. <laughs> well, that being said, uh, we got to know a, a, a more about your inspirational story as well as your passion. Uh, for those of you who are doing a road trip to Regina, we can take a sidebar over here and do a trip on Margaritaville uh, <laughs> boat. And, uh, and also, uh, it's good to know some of the quirky things that are in your life as well, too. So thank you. With that being said, everybody, please, let's give a hand to Ross. Thank you. Thank you.